Community Church. It's great to be in the house of the Lord tonight. It is Holy Ghost night. So we're here to lift up the name of Jesus, to glorify his name. He's a God of greatness. So be prepared tonight to see the greatness that God is going to do in this place tonight. Just be, be blessed in whatever is going to happen here tonight. And Father God, we just thank you tonight, God. We just thank you for the service, God. We thank you for the anointing, God, upon the praise and worship team tonight, God. Thank you, God. There, every song that they sing tonight, God, is anointed from heaven, Lord Jesus, God. We just thank you for that tonight. We thank you for Pastor as he brings forth the word. And Father, we thank you, every one of you is tonight. They're anointed with your power and your presence, Lord. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. We thank you for revival, God, that's spreading across the land, Lord Jesus, God. Father, I know your eyes are on us, Lord Jesus. You haven't forgotten us. And Father, we just thank you, God. It's on the way, and we glorify you and give you honor and praise tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready to thank the Lord for your new church building? Oh, yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our new church building, paid in full. You've got this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, I've asked Matt tonight to actually start out leading a few songs and everything. And uh, this is a teaching church, an equipping church, so just as pastor gives us opportunities to be able to to flow in ways, we want to give people a chance to be able to do that as well, right? So Matt's going to start off tonight, and we'll just kind of, I'll just kind of take it from there and uh, just, uh, just worship with us. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you all to stand, and um, as you do, um, thinking about our first song, John 14, 6, very familiar words, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we're going to sing about exactly that.
to fool around. We better get in the words and closer to him like you've never been before. Time is short, people. Time is very short. The Spirit is talking to me right now. It's like if we're not serious with him, He's not playing games anymore. There's a line draw in the sand, and you're going to have to choose your king. Either on the left or on the right. So are you going to be a sheep or a goat? It's all up to us. Church, I'm telling you, we got to be serious. Just like the pastor said this you got to repent, and you got to be serious. God is coming soon. Amen. is good. He is really good. He is gloriously good. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father Lord. We magnify you tonight. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you thanksgiving. Thank you. Lord, you're just so good. You are just, just so good. God says that we're all able ministers of the new covenant. And sometimes, you know, we have the idea that it's just it's just a handful of people that God can use. He's God can use anybody, everybody. He's, that's his desire is to use you and uh, to be used. Okay? That's his plan. He, he puts gifts and talents and anointings and abilities into us and Sometimes those things have to be drawn out. You know, when they find a diamond in, you know, in South Africa or someplace like that, it's a diamond, but until it gets shaped and polished, it, uh, uh, it has to be in the hands of a, of a, a craftsman. I remember they, they had found the, at one time it was the world's largest diamond. 
and uh, it was called the Hope Diamond. I don't know if you've never heard of that, but it was called the Hope Diamond. And when they they had they found this jeweler that uh, uh, he was he was the top of his line, and he realized that that he held this this huge diamond in his hand, and that he had to to, to shape it. You know, they have a little thing that they tap it with and shape it. He realized that this one wrong move, he said that thing would shatter and be worthless. Okay. But under under the, the so they put it into the right hands of somebody who was who was anointed to do that. And he, he made that I don't know if the Queen of England has the Hope Diamond or whatever it is, but anyway, he he became one of the most famous diamonds in the world. Amen. And so we're kinda of like that. You know, we're we're in God's hands, he's shaping us, he's molding us. And sometimes he's got to chip off a few things, okay, to make you to what? You know, sometimes it's a little painful, but it makes you more valuable. I remember just uh, uh, one year. Uh, it's always a, a struggle to find something different to give the women for Mother's Day, and so I was pastoring in Oklahoma, and I'm thinking, dear Lord, what can I get all these ladies for? You know, you you get so tired sometimes of just getting a, a carnation, uh, you know, at, at Mother's Day or something like that. So I went on and I got them all a big piece of coal. And they're probably cool. <laughs> cold. Why did you do that, Pastor? I said under the right conditions, under the right amount of heat and enough pressure, I said, you got a diamond in your hand. See, that's, that's, where, that's where diamonds come from. Did you know that? They come from an old, old piece of coal. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And the brand of Mashikanda, let's pray in the Mashikanda. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. If Padara shoots the down the Bromba Buti Kashikanda Nana, Lambramande, Etabara Bushitana, Kasakanda, Zabaro de Beshikanda, Mando Dore, Itabashita, Asanda, Lambondo de Santana, Rabashitarada, Butevata, Maridita. Ishibanda nana mata kasha kata rata banda bara vete ita bara rata Zambrongo shuta toro buti kesa kata rata rata kita rata Zambaru shita rata kita Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Down in my spirit I can hear these words Don't complain Don't complain about the pressure that you feel Don't complain about the time that you're in, say it's the Lord for you are valuable and you are precious and I have put you into the hands of an individual that is there to cause you to become of great value. Bring out the potential and the gifts and the talents and the anointings that are, there, are in you. And so don't squirm in your seats and don't feel uncomfortable and don't feel like you never get used. But know that in the fullness of time, I am shaping you and I am molding you for the work I've called you to, say it so. Hallelujah. 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 I remember Kathy O'Hara, she'd say, Pastor, you're stretching me. Pastor, you're stretching me. Hallelujah. Well, sometimes we need to be stretched a little bit. Get out of our comfort zone. And tonight we're going to get some people out of their comfort zones tonight. Hallelujah. And Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, 
So, you know, we were, Brother Vince was up here and he was, he was talking a little bit about what we talked about this morning. And that was uh, just a word that the Lord had said to me and it was the word repent. And so I knew that he wanted us to uh, uh, minister along that line and, and so we did. Uh, oh, let me see, I'm just looking for a particular verse here. Verse uh, chapter 2 in the book of Revelation. We'll take up our Sunday night offering here in just a minute. But I, just, I just thought of this verse here. I read the Holy Spirit just brought up in my spirit. Hallelujah. Verse 20. Chapter 2, verse 20. Now we're standing. He's talking to the church at the at Hyathira. Uh, verse 18. It says, that These things saith the, the, uh, saith the Son of God who has his eyes like unto flames of fire and his feet like unto fine brass. I know thy works and the charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy uh, works and the last be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against me because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel which calls herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Now notice verse 21, that's where we want to get to. I gave her space to repent. God gives us space to repent. Even this, this, this woman that was called Jezebel, you know, uh, I know a lot of people try to make a lot of things out of it, but if you just read the verse, it's just very, very evident, you know, just what it is. But it just says, I gave her space to repent. Hallelujah. So, you know, for, for us to go forward, like we said this morning, there comes a place that uh, uh, Jesus was out doing the same thing John the Baptist was. She says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You say, why is he saying repent? Why? Because there are some good things coming. It says that he preached the good news. Well, God's got some good things coming our way. But to get everything, you got you got to get lined up with God the right way. Amen. So let's take up our Sunday night offering tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Kathleen. Somebody give her a big pat on the back tonight. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, you can you can throw your money away. If, you can you can throw your money away on the lottery or put it into the kingdom of God. Uh, that putting it into the kingdom of God has a much higher rate of return. Amen. Amen. It really does. Thank you, Lord. And what? Did you say, Kathy? He and he compounds the interest on it too. So. Amen. Everybody, I'll say, anybody need something? All right, let's say this together. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for the opportunity and the privilege to sow into the kingdom of God. And what I do tonight, I do it by faith. And I know it'll come back to me. Press down shaken together and running over. It'll come back to me through the hands of men so that I can give a gas. I count it as done in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just magnify you tonight. Holy Ghost night. Thank you, Lord. Father, we want to do that, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Romans 8, 14. Please, Deborah, and thank you. Romans 8, 14. Verse we're, we're quite familiar with. <clears throat> Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit. I appreciated Matt singing that. Matt's got a pretty good voice. I never knew that. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's got a good voice. He's, a, he's good. Good at the leading praise and worship. We need to get him up here a little more often when we, when we struggle to find somebody. Anyway, he's, he's good. Very good. We appreciate that. Hallelujah. Not bad on the sound booth either, so. No. <laughs> For as many as are led. So, how many could be led? 
Well, all of us could be. Uh, all of us can be led if, if we'll let the Spirit of God lead. So if the Spirit of God leads, that means that you and I have to follow, doesn't it? Yes. So we have to be followers of the Spirit, not leaders. See, sometimes we talk about people being, well, they're a born leader. Well, if you're going to serve God, you need to be a born follower. Because yes. I don't know what to do, and, and, but he does. And so he's been training us for, for quite a number of years now. Uh, he said on Sunday nights, when you come, don't get, don't prepare. Don't prepare, don't get ready, don't do anything, but pray in the Holy Ghost Sunday afternoon. And uh, when you come, he says, I'll lead you. And I said to the Lord, I said, all right, Lord. He said, I want to have Holy Ghost service. I said, all right, but why don't you tell me what Holy Ghost service means to you, Lord? I might have my own idea. And he said, that's when he said, now don't prepare. Just show up. And I said, all right, we'll do it. But if you don't show up, I said, we'll sing a few songs. I'll take up the offering. We'll all go home early. That was, I don't know, 18, 19 years ago. That's never happened yet. It hasn't happened yet. Because the Holy Spirit still always just shows up. Say, what's he going to do? Well, sometimes we, we have a little of an inkling of something. Why? Because we're led of the Spirit. The Spirit of God will sometimes it'll show us things. Remember it says over in John 16, the, the Spirit of God, he'll show you things to Oh. Well, actually, this one over there, uh, just so you can see it. I know it's, e it's easy to quote it, but in uh, John 16, I believe it is John 16. Verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, everybody say the spirit of truth. Spirit of truth. Says the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he hears, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Now, when he says, I will show you things to come, there are things that haven't happened yet, but are going to happen. And so he, he has the ability to show us things a few minutes in the future, a few, few hours in the future, a few days, a few weeks, a few months, a few years in the future. In fact, these prophets of old, sometimes they, they saw things hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years into the future. And they didn't understand exactly what they saw, but they were obedient. It says over in First Peter, I think it's First Peter. Uh, that's fine. It could be Second Peter, but we'll, we'll find it. Second Peter, chapter 1, verse 21. Hallelujah. Are we good students tonight? Yes. There'll be a test, probably. <laughs> if you're a student, there's always a test. Verse 21, for the, for the prophecy came not in old time by, by the will of man, but holy men. Everybody say holy men. Holy. But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now, in the, in the Greek, it gives you a picture of somebody thrown into a fast river that is white water. And you're just, you're picked up and you're swept away, carried away. And this is what it is saying. It is saying that the, the Spirit of God came on them and they began to write as they were carried away by the Spirit. They were writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so it didn't come by any man's personal interpretation, private interpretation, but it says holy men of old as they were moved by the Spirit. See, the Spirit of God can take a man, take a woman, and, and he can, he can uh, uh, anoint them in such a fashion that uh, it's like you get carried away, carried away by the Spirit of God. Yes. And, and we don't know what we're going to say. We don't have things all planned out. Someone was talking to a minister one time, and they said, yeah, well, we go over to Word of Faith Church, and, and Sunday night's Holy Ghost night. He said, well, you should come on over sometime. They said, well, what's that like? He said, well, we don't do anything. We don't even prepare for it. He said, well, that's not possible. You can't have a service without you know, somebody being prepared. Well, you know what? You can prepare yourself by praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I spend more time preparing my spirit than I do my mind. Hallelujah. Why? Because he's not. I don't want him to come out of my mind, work out my mind. But I want him to come up and work out of my spirit. 
So if I spend quality time work, praying in the Holy Ghost, then he's got something to work with. Hallelujah. Now that doesn't mean that we don't study and put the Word of God down on the inside of us, because we do. But then, uh, I remember so many years ago, you got time for a story? I remember Brother Higgins saying this. I'm in, in Bible school and, and listening to him, and he's telling his stories. He had quite a few, probably a few more than I do even. And he was telling this story how he was ministering in a particular church. And he'd go, he said, I'd never go for less than, than, than five or six weeks, sometimes eight, ten, twelve. And they always, his services would always go that long. And, uh, and now, so this was, you know, just outside of the Depression and things. And they didn't have all the entertainment thing going on today that people have, but so... Anyway, he was uh, laying on the bed, and he was praying about the, the service. I don't know if it was the next, that night or the next day, and he was praying about it and asking the Lord about it. And the Lord said, uh, don't be concerned about the service. He says, but if you get up there, I'll just pull out what I need. And I thought, dear Lord, will I ever get to that place? That seemed like a, such an impossible thing. To me, that God could just take somebody and start pulling things out of their spirit. Well, eventually, over over almost 50 years, you get a few things down on the inside of you, and if, if they're good things, God can bring them out as as needed. Amen. Amen. And so we said over in Romans 8:14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Okay. And so God's desire is to lead us and show us. He said, we saw that God would show us things to come. I saw a few things. Right? And so uh, I, I try to say this very humbly. Uh, I, I see things. I see things. I see they're, they're, they're what we call mini vision. M-I-N-I, mini vision. I have mini visions. Uh, but I have them down in my spirit. All right? And I see things down on the inside of me. My, I have usually worshiping the Lord and, and I'll, I'll see something. And uh, like this morning, uh, uh, I didn't particularly see things, but, but I would have a word that would come to me, the word of the Lord, you know, the, a word of knowledge, a word, just a word that talked about a certain condition in somebody. And, uh, and so <clears throat> these things, the, the Lord brings these things to us. Well, I saw a few things tonight that I, I just, I'm just going to act them out tonight. Say, what's going to happen? I have no clue. I have no clue. But I just need to be obedient. So I'm sitting there, and normally what I do as we're drawing closer to the end of praise and worship, I'm asking the Lord, Lord, uh, do you want somebody to come up to the platform? Do you want somebody to say something? Which is quite common for us, and sometimes it'll be uh, Pastor Kathy, like it was this morning. It might be Nellie. Sometimes it'll be Albert Hood, or uh, sometimes it's Ben Maria. But the Lord said, no, I want Vince to come up. I said, well, all right. I said, well, did you let Vince know? He said, no, we didn't let Vince know do anything. But he did great, didn't he? Yes. Hallelujah. Well, he's being trained. He's being trained. Hallelujah. Well, I, I saw while we were singing, I saw Julie up here. Hallelujah. So we're just, Julie, we're just going to turn this over to you for a little bit. I don't know what you're going to do. I have no clue. Does it, I just, just obey the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, you, that's, that's what you can hang on to that really good. Hallelujah. Um, God, great. Like, a lot more than the word great. <laughs> He's an infinite, yes. He's everywhere. Um, Jesus just held my hand. Since I was a weight, <laughs> he was holding my hand. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I'm going to lead you, my child. Follow me. Wow. And I was like, oh, that's all I want to do. It's my heart's desire right there. Mm -hmm. And the purest sense that it, I'm not even joking, the purest sense that you can say it in. Heart's desire right down to my very toes is to follow him in such a way that perfect follow like you've shown in 
was just so. Yeah. It was glorious. It was just there was no fear. There was no no condemnation. It was, it was a peaceful, just a glorious walk. y'all know me yet enough, but I'm, I can get wild, so forgive me as God leads me, because I'm going to be wild probably, so God love you. So I don't know what else to say, Pastor. I'm like wild. <laughs> of God. You've got to see it in your minds. It's so much more than what we know. So much more than we've even heard. We've limited in him in it because he's so much bigger. He's everywhere. He Like I'm trying to tell people, he's, he's he knows every spill on the that tree in the whole world. He knows how many's on it. He knows how many's on the ground. Every second of every day. He knows us to the very cellular level because he made us. The whole earth was made by him. And out of past, he's everywhere. Like it just so if we know that, isn't there a strength in that? Isn't there an assurity in God that's so amazing? There's nothing here he does. He is Sorry, I hope this doesn't offend anybody. He's in hell. He can be everywhere. He is everywhere. That's what that means. It's the most beautiful thing to grasp onto, to know. That's our God. That's the one that loves us. He's the one that holds us. You know what I mean? He's that one. I don't know. You guys get the Holy Ghost hugs like me, but I'm telling you, he's that, that's him. Inside, clear in through, all the way. There's nothing in there he doesn't see already. Doesn't already know. He knows everything. Why we don't, you might haven't figured that one out. But, <laughs> but it's so amazing. It's just, it's the most powerful love you can have when you know that much about him and know how close he can be to you. And you guys just need to stand on him and trust him. He'll take us everywhere we need to go right now because he's calling us forward like crazy. We're coming out of everywhere, guys. We're coming out of homes there's not even supposedly a Christian in. They're coming. Because God's there already. We put him in the boxes. I want them all gone. I'd like to have a Holy Ghost box fire. <laughs> But anyway, his love, all-encompassing, right? Yes. His glory. Oh, knock you over. That one will. <laughs> it's beautiful. And just know that all of us are being called. There's something in every one of us he's going to use. There's not one of you that can be anywhere here that he doesn't know about. And we're all going to be used. He's calling us forward. For his glory. His glory. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing he's doing, guys. His glory. We just need to surrender and accept. And read your Bible, because that's our weapon. And it'll protect you in any hour. And in any situation. Get him in your heart. Deep down in. So that he, and then you ask the Holy Ghost to help you recall them. And use them when they're needed. Because that's our sword. Come on. And he meant for us to use it. And this time we need to use it good. 
We have to be righteous in how we use it by his word. There's no other way to use that sword. Because it'll cut asunder. It'll shatter them away. The evils of darkness, the lies, the deceptions, all of it. The little ones, the little ones that everybody thinks aren't big, they're going to be gone. It's beautiful, guys. He's just doing such a work. And there's no slowing down, so hold on. <laughs> and it's all for him. He's glorious. I just can't say enough praises to him anymore. It's just nonstop. There's no way. Even when something's coming at, you just go, hallelujah, praise the Lord, here we go. And then something will show its ugly head usually, and you can kind of call it out and say, I, can, I cast you down, or I bind you, or whatever, in Jesus' name. And then you keep going. In faith, you walk it. Because it works. I'm proving it every day. Okay, so it works. Have your faith. Rise it up. Bring it forward. And celebrate. Because we're the winners, guys. Amen. Hallelujah. And I love you all. Okay? God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I saw Joy here this morning. And and I saw you. I didn't, I was asking the Lord, was it for this morning or for tonight? So obviously it wasn't for this morning. But it is for tonight. I saw you just walking down the aisles and I saw you ministering to people. And uh, the only thing is, we don't manufacture anything. We do not manufacture anything. If there's nothing for somebody, uh, we don't say anything. But if there is something, you just come and and uh, we'll just obey the Holy Spirit. Is that okay with you? All right. I'm just going to go sit down and do yeah. this a little bit. That, that explains a lot. <laughs> what did you mean by that? <laughs> this afternoon, praying, Eleanor and I and uh, Michael and... Uh, Christoph, we're all here praying, and uh, how do I say this? I know in the last little bit we've all been watching about revival. So oh Lord, like, what does that really, you know, look like? And, and uh, we've been crying out for revival. I know since George and I started coming here, uh, pastors had Kathy pray about revival and not coming here. And the last, uh, I'd say about a part of three weeks, I've just been uh, feeling this heaviness on my chest. Um, and so the last two Sundays, when we've come, um, been praying, and even this afternoon, I thought it had lifted, but during worship, it uh, it wasn't. It was still there. Then when Vince got up, I was like, Ah, yes, Lord, Jesus is coming. He's coming back. And uh, just the uh, burden I've been feeling for people. Um, I haven't experienced that in a while, and I'm praying for each of you that uh, we'd all be strong um, in the coming age. God's prepared us all to be here for this time, and uh, I know uh, words of encouragement are far and few between. Today, it seems everybody seems, or not everybody, but those that were around, uh, people.
people get angry really quickly. Um, they don't have time for people. Um, they just want to go do, you know, get mad at somebody, tear off in a tangent at somebody. And I'm like going, Lord, where's the love? <laughs> where's the love? And we've been talking about that too. Um, better part of the last couple of months. And, uh, uh, just asking the Lord, I'm like, going, what, what role is, what role do I have to play in it? And uh, just expressing, he's like, you're it, <laughs> tag, you're it, tag, you're it. And I'm like, what? And he's like, my love, it hasn't stopped. It hasn't stopped. I've given it out to people. But inside of them, they put blockages in inside. So I'm not able to move. So what I'm asking you to do <laughs> is be my love to people. Help take those blockages out of them. Because it's like going, people have gotten calloused. But that hurts and pains. And sometimes it's people in our own. own church right I know my friend said you know who injures uh, the warriors the most is people inside the church and my heart just cried out here the other day for a guy I used to minister um, with um, at the missions organization and he was feeling a lot of condemnation of hurt um, from the ministry and uh, getting condemnation from the enemy saying, you know, um, he wasn't feeling all that great. And he's like, I don't think I was the best example when I was in ministry. And he's like, I believe I hurt a lot of people. And my heart just cried out. And I'm like, Lord, I'm hearing this more and more. There's more of your ministers that, you know, they're uh, feeling hurt, um, you know, one way or another, or felt like they've been hurt by somebody, um, having that condemnation on themselves. And uh, I'm like, Lord, what do you want? You know, I'm, I'm heavy hearted, so what if, you know, what do I do? And he's like, you do what you do best. What I'm getting you to do is to encourage, to exhort encourage people, you know, um, I just, a lot of times I don't want, really want to do it, but <laughs> it's, it just happens when he puts it on my heart for somebody, and uh, little do I know, and thank God, um, he doesn't tell me everything, he just gives me bits and pieces, and so if I write something down that he's given me, um, a lot of the times, like, the person's, like, looking at me and they're like, how did you know this? And I'm like, how did I know what? Well, how did you know this, 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 this? And I'm like, I said, this is what God gave me. And uh, they're like, thank you. That's encouraged me. You have no idea what situation and everything I'm going, I'm going through. So, um, that explains the heaviness pastor because I was wondering I'm like Lord I'm like is this me what am I sent feeling something from somebody or not feeling that's the wrong word sensing something from somebody and so I was like oh and I'm just gonna leave it and I'm like, Lord I'll just go sit down and I'm like whatever you got for the service tonight I'm you know I'm good <laughs> so that explains a lot so um just looking around here. <laughs> Who wants to be the first candidate? <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Mr. Sam. I am. You are a light that shines bright. And you're a good dad. God wants to remind you of that. You're a good dad. No matter what your head tries to tell you, you're a good dad. And that's that.
and Bolivian journals. Mamere and Papere. God just wants to let you two know you're such a blessing. You're such a blessing to each other and to your boys. And I know sometimes your nerves might get like a little frayed with all the energy and things that go on in their lives, but God just wants to encourage you that he put you together and uh, you're a good team together. And with each other, there's nothing that you can't do with him. And even when things seem to be over your head, he's there with you. And he's, he's like, with me, there's nothing you can't do. And Charles, it seems to me that God might be, he, he seems to be telling me that he may be moving you at work into another position and I, I don't know what position that you have right now but it's it's going to change um, because he has places for you to minister to people that normally wouldn't get ministered to and as you come in contact with them people are going to open up whether you're at work home or at the office, whichever, because you might be, you might be going back to an office, and uh, he's going to draw people to you, people that you would least expect, he said, that you would least expect, they're going to come running to you, because they don't know what to do, because this world is a mess, and they won't know what to do. But they know if they go to you, you'll have words for them. Words of comfort, words of life, a new life, a new life, a new life, a new life. You will tell them, the one that gives abundant life. Abundant life, yeah, yeah. And Emily, just uh, be, be who you are and shine. You're a great mom. And uh, God sees your heart at times and it's like, Lord, why'd you give me all these boys? <laughs> but he knew that you could handle them all from great to small. So he knows. He knows your heart. And uh, won't depart. And uh, he just wants to say to both of you that he loves you too so much. You know. And that's not Miss Love speaking either. So uh, that's from the Father. The Father of love. Love so divine and so great. Um, yeah. He just really wants to reiterate that to you too. walk in it. Even when times are difficult, uh, to just walk in it. Walk in it uh, and know that he's there with you always. And uh, keep him really close. Really close to you. Even as you're uh, driving the roads, uh, you said stay close to him. Going to sports or activities with the boys at school, um, he's like, stay close to him as you're driving. Stay very, very close to him as you're driving. Okay. Um, what's your name again? I can't remember. I know you told me your name, but Tamara. <laughs> see you as this big sparkly star and you might see seem like you know you're the only one in the dark where you travel but 
these, like, you're being looked at. You might not see, see anything happening, but your people are looking at you. Yeah, your friends, those that you come in contact with, they're looking at you as you go about your day. And it might be just going to the bakery and getting some bread, but you're shining wherever you go and you're not alone, okay? God says, I'm sticking beside you just like super glue. <laughs> And uh, he's never going to let you go. Never. Never. When you get that feeling that you've really blown it, you've messed up big time, come to him. It's like, Lord, forgive me. And then forget. Don't carry it with you. He's freed you. Don't carry that weight. It's his to carry. Okay? Yeah. And you're just going to shine, shine, shine. Like I can, I can just see this this big, brilliant star, like in the Milky Way. It's, it's not as bright as the North Star, but you're bright. You're really bright. <laughs> just saying this because I know you. God wants to remind you once again Mr. Fisher of men get to it. Stop procrastinating. Get to it. There's a lot of men and women waiting. Either as you gas up or you stop to unload or to reload, even at the uh, trucking company, at their gates, even in the building, um, there's people watching you, and they're listening to you, and they're trying to like, what is he all about? But you have an answer for them, and God's told you. You are going to be a great fisher of men. So there are many waiting for you to get on the road and let nothing hinder you. You go by what Holy Spirit is telling you <coughs> to do. It might seem really weird and far out and out of the old comfort zone. But God said, all you have to do is just throw them a bone. I know it's not with fishing terms, but, you know, bait, you know, get them in. Yeah, because you are going to be bringing a great multitude of men and women into the kingdom. Yeah. As you travel in that truck. And it's not just because it's a job. That's what God's called you to do. Because there's a lot of men and women that are lonely. They're trying to fill the void with different ways. And only you can reach them because you can relate to them in many, many ways. Even ways that you haven't even shared or told. God said, I'm going to use you and you're going to be bold. Bolder, bolder, bolder than you have ever been in your entire life. And you know what? There's not going to be any strife doing this. Even with your family, your family's going to see the difference. Even that brother of yours, he's going to see the difference in you. And God's going to bring him into the kingdom too. He is. So, fish.
fisher of man and women. What are you going to do? You're going to get on the road and you're going to bring them in, right? Yeah. Morning, noon, or night. Don't worry. They're not going to take flight just yet. Good things are coming. Good things are coming. Yeah. Good things are coming. And all that stuff that you've been contending for, it's going to come to pass. It is. It's going to come to pass, the Lord says. Get yourself rooted and grounded. Rooted and grounded in the word and in his love from above. You walk in it and you'll be surprised. And before you will stand something, there'll be surprise. Something that you've been waiting for for a long, long time. God said, you're going to get your surprise. been going on has only just begun. As you keep on yielding to me, I will continue to use you. You are my mouthpiece because you want to. You want to, you're willing, and you're obedient. There's nothing too difficult that I ask you to do that you won't do. And just like with Manny, there are men that will be coming to you because they want to hear your testimony of what God has done for you. So never be timid, never be afraid, never be ashamed. His light is going to be bursting through more and more as you see the day approaching. More and more as you see the day approaching. My light is going to come bursting through you. I'm going to fill you and fill you and fill you to overflowing. Nobody will be able to stop the brook that is flowing. The brook will become a river a river, a great rushing stream, and in me, you will see men set free. Because this is the place I've called you to be. Yeah. 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 Cecile. God's pretty little flower. like as a, you want to call them one of those uh, Shasta Daisies? Because you're always smiling and you're always, your head's like towards the sun. And uh, you just get this countenance, just happiness and joy. You know, when people come in through the door, like, they're like, hi! And to every little girl and boy that comes to the nursery, God says, yeah, you're his special flower. He loves the fragrance that's coming off of you. His fragrance. His fragrance of love and joy and hope and peace. It's just, it, it's coming off you, and it's just given this, it's better than the most expensive perfume that you could ever, like man could ever buy. 
because God said, you're the apple of his eye. You're the apple of his eye. And he loves you so. And uh, don't think that you're losing a petal to the ground. Because just as he sees every little bird, sparrow, he looks after them. He's looking after you. He's looking after you. And he's like, don't be worried or concerned. I've got it. I've got it. Just come to me. I've got it. Trust me. You're going to see. situations you're thinking, God, how, how, how is this even possible? He's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Not you. I'm going to do it. So just keep on surrendering. Keep surrendering. Keep surrendering. And I'll see you through. Rivers of abundance. <sighs> flow, flow, flow. Rivers of joy and abundance. Rivers of joy and abundance. In those places, deep in your heart, God said, my love is in there. And things are going to start. Things are going to start to overtake you. Get ready, my daughter, <laughs> because I love you. <laughs> I love you. 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 You gotta run with it. You gotta run with it. You gotta run with it. You gotta dive in it. And then you're gonna swim in it. You gotta swim. Swim. Swim in my river. Swim in my river. Swim in my river, my darling, my bride. A swim in the river, there's nothing to hide. A swim in the river, my daughter, today. Swim, 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 my daughter. Swim, 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 my daughter. Swim in the There's nothing to dread. A swim, my daughter, tonight. A swim, swim, swim. A swim, swim, swim. A swim in my river, my daughter, tonight. Miss Kathy. <laughs> Don't 
don't give me that look. <laughs> who I've called you time and time again woman of valor that's who I've called you be strong be courageous do not be timid anymore for I am with you wherever you go wherever you go I am with you. Keep your eyes on me. Keep your eyes on me, you see. Even in this process of repentance, you will see. You will see that you have the victory. I've taken all of that that you're offering me, and I'm putting it in the sea of forgetfulness. So that you, my dear daughter, can rest. You can rest. You can rest at night. You can rest at night. Things will not be running over and over in your head. There will be things that now you won't even dread. Because I am giving you territory that you've been asking to take back. And in the spirit, you are mighty, 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 mighty woman of God. Mighty, mighty, mighty woman of God. Don't forget it. Step in it. Step in it. Because I have given you commands. I have given you commands over places, people, and lands. In the spirit, you are strong. And in me, you will never go wrong. Keep your focus on me. And you're going to see. You're going to see those victories. You're going to see those victories come. Yeah, they're going to come quick at times. Stuff that even maybe you've forgotten that you asked him about. He's going to bring it to mind. And he's like, yeah, I've got it. Don't even think about it again. He's got it. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Mr. Matt. Pure heart and humble. A pure heart and humble. A pure heart and humble. You have a pure heart. heart towards God and you're looking for what's best and God said don't worry you're passing the test you're passing the test just keep focusing in on him in those things <clears throat> that you've asked for healing deep within. Deeper roots, a deeper anointing. God said, I'm going to do it. You keep on focusing on me. Don't focus on the things that are trying to get your attention. Just keep focusing in on me. Those distractions are going to come and they're going to go. But in 
him. He's going to make you bold. Bolder in the spirit where you've never been. Bolder with people that you work with every day. And even as you go about your day, going to work and coming home, the Lord's going to put people in the the answer for the situation. You have the only answer because they've gone other ways of trying to get an answer, but when they come to you, it's going to click just like that. It's like, wow, you are so full of wisdom and knowledge. It's like, why didn't I come to you before? You know? And you're just going to open up the door and it's like going, well, it's not me, it's God. He, he brought me to you. Do you want to hear, you know, what, what he's done for me? And it's just going to be opportunity, opportunity, opportunity of telling others your story. Your story and what God's done for you and where he's brought you to. Yeah. And Sometimes you think, well, God, that's just a small little thing. But in that small little thing, God said something bigger is going to happen, and which is going to cause a reaction. In that reaction, somebody's going to um, explode with the word that you give them from the Lord and they're going to see their life totally transformed okay and he's like keep your um, notebook and pen by your bed um, because sometimes during the night He's going to give you songs to write. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I would suggest a couple of notebooks at least. Just a couple of notebooks. And a couple of good pens. Yeah, really good pens. Yeah. So you're going to be busy. <laughs> Miss Kim, I'm just going to reiterate, he's on a love boat of how much he loves you. Just really how much, how much he loves you. And uh, he just wants to envelop you in a great big, huge bear hug. I know he's bigger than that, but he said that will do for right now. <laughs> And uh, how much he loves your family. And he's, he's seen you in the last little bit again with the tears and everything with the boys. And the situation at school. But he's bigger. We know that, right? Yeah, he's much bigger. But he said, you just needed a big bear hug tonight. He says, says Mama Bear gets weary at times, and um, she just needs that big old hug for me tonight, so, and just remind her how much I love her, how much I love her, yeah, and he's going to fix Papa Bear, yep, Papa Bear doesn't know this yet, but he's going to get fixed. <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> not what I you know. Was, yeah, now I'm thinking, I'm like, oh gosh, what's the. Oh, I'm cluing in what I just said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> and Miss Nelly, you're like a, a worker bee. Did you see a bumble, a little bumblebee? Just going here, there, something needs to get done. Just like here, there, everywhere. But uh, she's a happy, a happy bumblebee. Even at times when things just don't seem to be going right. God said, you're his happy, happy uh, honeybee. You're just, you're working, you work through it, you speak to it, you work through it, you speak to it, you work through it, you speak to it, you work through it, and he's like going, oh, tell her she's going to get a big, big sum of honey. <laughs> For all her efforts, it's it's coming. You're you're gonna see it. And a lot of the times you'll be working and you're like, oh Lord, what am I doing this for? I'm not be doing something else. I'd rather be doing this, that, whatever. He's like, oh, there is a purpose. There is a purpose, and he loves that you're obedient, even though sometimes your head is saying, uh uh, I don't wanna do this anymore. He's like he likes your obedience. He loves, actually, yeah, he loves your obedience and being willing, no matter what. And he said it is going to pay off in the end. You will see it. You will see all the works of your labor. You'll be really, really good in the end. That's it. you just love the diversity of God? Isn't that awesome? Now, some people may hear this and say, what's that? That's just another side of God that we get to experience. Um, if you want to put on the screen Psalms 8 verse 4. Psalms 8 verse 4. And it says... What is man that you are mindful of him? What is man? I just heard that scripture when we were up worshiping the Lord. I just, uh, and I was saying, Lord, I don't hear you. I never hear you, Lord. I just don't hear you anymore. And I just, I heard that scripture, and I knew enough that it wasn't something that I had just read or I had even heard for months. But the Lord, I was just saying, Lord, what, what, what about that scripture? But the Lord was saying, my mind is full of you. What is man that you, David was saying, what is man that you, God, are mindful of him? And God is saying tonight, have you seen how my mind is full of you? I'm sitting here thinking of what I can do for you. What I can plan for you, what I've got for you to do, how I've got blessings for you, how can I can encourage you tonight, how I can, I, I love the words because I, I know everybody pretty well here and I pretty well know, not everybody, but almost everybody, so I know when your words are right on or if they would be in left field, so they're right on. And it's so awesome and interesting. And I love the prophetic word. I guess I always have. Because it's just something that I didn't grow up with. Didn't even know what a prophetic word was until I came to Word of Faith Church 23, 24 years ago. But it, those words are so powerful. Even last Sunday night with Pastor Brian here just giving words out. And I'm like, oh, these words are so awesome. But God is saying, my mind is full of you, full of you. And the things that he spoke to you tonight, for you that receive the word, take those words in your heart and be like Mary. Remember when the angel showed up for Mary and gave her a word and it said, Mary took those words and she pondered them in her heart. She put them in her heart and she didn't walk out of church and forget about the words 
and have somebody maybe remind her two weeks later, but she kept them in her heart and she pondered them. Said, Lord, what did you mean? What did you mean that I'm a good mom? What did you mean that I'm a good dad? Am I really a good dad? Am I really a good mother? Am I really making an impact on my children? You know, you do, as a parent, you leave a legacy to your children. What you do today makes a difference for your grandchildren. It makes a difference. What you do is so important, and a lot of times we don't see that. We think, well, we're just, we're just you know, taking our kids to church. And, uh, no, what you're doing is so powerful. It's so powerful in the spirit. God's mind is full of us. He's full of us planning what he can do, the things that he has for us to do. But it's not just sometimes, you know, we come here and we hear, God's got a plan, God's got a job for you, and, and the whole world's got a job for us to do, you know. And that's sometimes tiring, and you're like, why would I want to come to church and hear he's got a job? I'm tired. i got enough jobs out there. But the job that God has is good. It's good. It's exciting. It's encouraging. It's, it's a whole different thing than what the world has. And if, if it ever gets to the point where the job that God has for you is brings you down, you might want to re-ask and re, revisit everything and say, am I actually in the right spot? Am I actually doing what he wants me to do? Because what he wants you to do is good. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And everything he does is good. It might be challenging, but it's still going to be good. But I, I just, I heard these words and I just felt the Lord was saying that my mind is full of you. And you know, when you, do you ever think about, you know, I, I have kids and I, and I dream about them and I say, oh, wow, you know, they could go here. They could do, oh, they're so smart. They could be this. And I can, in my mind, I can see them going places and becoming something wonderful and great and big. Well, that's what God does. His mind is so full of you tonight. He's just planning. He's just, he's just dreaming and saying, this is what I've got for them. I think Julie was talking a little bit about that already and just saying how much how much goodness God has and it's so big and uh, it's so good. His mind is, I want you to know that because there might be somebody here tonight and you think God doesn't really care about me too much or I just seem to always be left out. When everybody gets a word, I just seem to be left out. God says, you're not left out. You're not left out. My mind is full of you and I think about you. Because the next line says, and the son of man, David is saying, what is man that you visit him? And that word visit really actually means gives attention to and cares for. And God cares for you and he gives attention to you. And I, and I was just loving all the diverse words. You know, man, he got a word, fishers of man. I'd be crawling under the table if somebody said fishers of men. I'd be like, whoa, that, you know, that is, you know, that doesn't thrill me too much. You know what I mean? That would scare me, if anything. But, you know, there's people that got those words, and I was like, they're so individualized, these words that God has. I like being a bee because I love honey, so I, I, I take that, you know. But they're so individualized, your words that you got. And God's mind is full of you. And he has the, the plans that he has. He's already written down. And he says, I put that in your DNA to be like this. You're, you're, you attract people. You have a way to talk to people. You just have that people. You're a people magnet. You know, Charles, and I know that for a fact because people, when we talk, when we're talking to the architects concerning the church and you're not there, they say how, how smart you are now awesome you are and they say things that are like they have high respect for you they highly regard you so when I heard that word I was like yeah wow that's so good God's mind is full thinking how can I use this man in the marketplace how can I make him just be a people magnet and drop these little words about me to them and and something encouraging and something smart and you're not just Smart, but you're really, really smart, you know. Uh, some people are just really, really smart. And you can say, well, I studied hard. I studied hard too, baby. I am not that smart. So it's God. It's God that puts that in you, right? 
And that is so good. And God just say, my mind is full of you. And I want everybody to know tonight from Brianna, who was sitting here last week when the church was open all day last Sunday. All day was open from, I think, what time do you get here? 8.30? 8.30 in the morning till after 9 o'clock p.m. And I watched that little girl. She was here all day. And I came in a little bit later because I had gone home for lunch and came back. And she was just sitting in the middle. Someone was there, had her little boots on. She was just sitting there worshiping the Lord. And I was just watching her. I was like, I was like this is God. When you got a 15 or 16, how old is she? 16. 16? When you have a 16-year-old sitting there for 13 hours worshiping the Lord, it's God. It's God. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, God's mind is full. Just thinking of that little girl and saying, look what I'm doing. I'm pouring my love in her. I'm pouring my love in her. Pouring. The world sees this, but I see that. I see that. And you know what? God will use anybody and everybody who's willing to say, just use me. Just use me, Lord. You know, I don't know how, but again, all these individualized words were so awesome. I don't know if you think they're awesome. I think they're just totally awesome. And I just, I hear them and I'm like, oh, that's him. That's him. Yes, he's just like that. Oh, that's her. Oh, that's her. Yes, I know that, you know. And it's good. But God wants you to know his mind is full of you. Full of you. Planning. He's writing. He's got books writing down. This is what I want them to do. This is what this is what I've got for them. And it's just, it's good what he has for you, okay? It's good what he has for you. It's not too hard that you can say, I don't know how to do this, but it's good. And he's so patient and he's kind. And when you do mess up, you can always come back to him. You can walk away from the Lord because he said he'd never leave you. You know, a lot of times you say, God, I just don't feel you anymore. It's not that God walked away. It's that I walked away from him. It's that I got too busy to take time. And I like what Julie said. She said, put his word in your heart. And that's what the Lord has just been dealing with me about. Put, your, put my word in your heart. It's my word that's going to bring you over. It's God's word that is going to come to you in those night seasons or those hard times or whatever. You know, it's his word that is going to come to you. And that word is life. And it's like she said, it, it pierces, it divides. It, it just pushes you over. And a word from a friend is good, but there's nothing like God's word. Amen? Amen. Amen. But you know, I want you to, don't forget the scripture. His mind is full of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. Wrap it up. Okay. We're going to wrap it up. Well, this was awesome tonight. It was awesome. I, I loved it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the praise and worship. It was great to have Matt here. I just see Matt. You can, you know, you just, um, when, when you were leading worship, all I could think about was just forget about yourself. Concentrate on him and worship him. When you get to the point where you just forget about yourself, you just start flowing and flowing because you're anointed, your your voice is awesome, you play good. I mean, I was just like, stay here, I want to keep singing with you because, you know, we always like new blood, right? It's, it's fun, new blood's fun. So I was like, this is so much fun, stay here, you know. But, uh, but anyways, it's good. You just, you just keep going. You come and visit us when you want because in this place you're going to get some impartations that you just, you know, you, you're just going to get some different food. You know, you go to a Chinese restaurant to get Chinese food. You don't go to a Chinese restaurant to get Big Macs, right? So in this place, you're going to get different kind of food. So just come on and taste and see that God is good. It's good to see everybody here tonight. Visitors, great to see Tamara here. It's great to see Emily and Charles coming up too. I think they got a babysitter home now. Your son is babysitting, so that's awesome. That's a new um, that's a new stage. So it's really great, and to have all of you here tonight. It's wonderful. I uh, believe that we have miracle service Friday night. Is that correct? I forgot to put in the bulletin, so you can blame me for that. But uh, I do believe that it's March, March third uh, on Friday. So miracle night on Friday night, all right. Besides our Wednesday night service, besides our Tuesday night by uh, prayer meetings. So we want to just thank you again for coming out. 
and uh, be encouraged in the word. Amen? Be encouraged in the word. God is good. We love you all. God bless you.